Got him. That must be a white fish. I worked it real hard. He's pulling good. There he is. There we go. So that's what they refer to in Minnesota as a tulipy, I guess. I mean, I, I would call that a whitefish, but um, the locals seem to call that a tulipy, and, and they're a blast to catch. Um, man, they really fight hard, and you get them come in on the on the graph, and uh, you know, lift your jig, and if they follow it as fast as you lift it, and then just start jigging it up and down real aggressively, and they'll just come up and slam it. So um, they're pretty awesome. Well, it's the first week of March. And we've taken a short little three-day trip to Lake of the Woods in northern Minnesota. And we've come up basically for walleye and sauger. Um, but the reports lately are that the, the whitefish or tulipy um, are also going pretty strong. In fact, um, we just had a group of guys come back and uh, they ended up catching and bringing back about 60 uh, tulipies. In, in their group um, and, and we have been getting them sporadically I've been getting uh, half a dozen a day or so I got a bite going right here let's see what we got um, this feels like a small sauger or a small walleye I'll explain what we're doing here in a second once I get this this fish up yeah just a small walleye so unfortunately um, or fortunately I guess we've we've been kept busy with these little seven inch walleyes and and um, you know not, not quite big enough for the frying pan um, but you know they've been keeping us busy but the larger ones have eluded us uh, we had one 20 incher in the slot the other night and um, a couple of 16 16 and a half inch walleyes uh, and then um, actually some pretty decent saugers up around 13 to 14 inches but the fishing has been real slow um, what we've had to do to catch these fish is, is basically we've gone all the way down to a small Lindy Frosty jig. Um, we're using pink and white and then uh, we're putting a fathead minnow, tipping that off with a fathead minnow. And we're sending those down and we're, we're keeping them about anywhere from 8 inches to a foot and a half off the bottom. And, and you pretty much just have to lay your rod on a bucket and let it dead stick. Uh, as soon as you move that jig, the majority of those fish will drop right back down to the bottom or scoot off to the side. So they haven't been very willing to eat at all. But we've been able to, to go ahead and, and trick a few into biting. And, um, you know, again, it still makes for an enjoyable trip. It's always fun to come up to some place like this. Um, we go ahead and get a sleeper shack. We stay right out on the ice. And, and um, you know, there's something pretty cool about... Um, being able to wake up in the morning and, and basically drop a rod right down the hole and and uh, jig from the end of your bed if you want to. Um, and uh, then obviously you've got the opportunity to really do some nice uh, socializing with friends and such around, around uh, dinner and drinks in the shack and, and it just makes for a real enjoyable trip. So as I mentioned, we've been using a Lindy Frosty jig 
and uh, one of the changes that I've made, I, I was originally hooking my minnows ahead of the dorsal fin so that that minnow would hang flat under the bait. Um, what ended up happening was my buddy Bob started hooking his behind the dorsal fin a little closer to the tail and that was causing that bait to hang or the uh, uh, minnow rather to hang a bit more vertical under the bait and he started getting uh, quite a bit more bites than I did and uh, the theory was is that by hooking a little closer to the tail that fish needs to uh, swim a little harder to keep itself upright and so it's giving more action to the bait um, and it, it's uh, keeping things a bit more lively down there. Well I've gone and moved myself outside. Uh, we had a couple of guys come up and join us because the action had been good in the shack that we were in, uh, which was in a little deeper water. We've been in 31 feet of water. Uh, the other guys are in about 25 or 26. So, um, you know, you put five guys in a shack and uh, it gets a little crowded. So I decided to move out. I actually dug myself just a little berm in the snow here to block the wind from my back. And uh, it's pretty comfortable today. It's in the mid 30s, very light wind. Um, but it is an east wind, which even ice fishing, you know, that, that's a wind direction that will tend to make things a little tougher. But uh, I just set up, just finished berming out my little shelter here. And uh, I've got fish on the graph. And we're just going to head, uh, go ahead and work them just like we were in the shack, and we'll see if we can get some to respond. I don't know what I got here, but I'm being spooled. Here, I'll have you film this. There you go. I dropped down. Oh, it's a big pike. Big pike? Big pike. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, dropped down and, and I never saw him on the Vexilar and my bait never made it to the bottom. And, uh, here. Yeah. So I decided to lift up and uh, that's what I had. It was a nice northern. Now he's going to go over 30. Alright, so all heck kind of broke loose there for a second, but. Uh, Basically, I was sending my bait down, and uh, I never marked this guy on the graph. And uh, my bait was going down, and it just stopped going. And uh, line went slack with maybe, I don't know, I probably had dropped it 15 foot, so about halfway down. And uh, usually that's an indication that something picked up your bait. So I went ahead and reeled up the slack, and it tightened up. and. I actually thought, well, maybe I was stuck on the bottom of the ice for some reason. Maybe I didn't put out as much line as I thought. But uh, then all of a sudden the rod loaded up and started peeling drag, and I got this guy. So technically, uh, he's a legal fish. We just measured him, and he's about 29 and 3 quarters. Um, between 30 and 40 inches is the slot limit here on Lake of the Woods. Uh, this, this fish here um, would be legal to keep, but... Uh, I think I'm going to end up letting this guy go. Alright, we'll see if he swims away here. Left there. Five. Oh. There he goes. So what I'm doing is I have one of the uh, frosty jigs set about um, anywhere from 8 to 10 inches off the bottom. Then I've got the second jig about uh, eh, one and a half feet off the bottom. And what I do is I, I, I'll wait for a fish to come on the screen. And um, I tend then to just lift one of the baits. And what I'm looking for is to see if the fish will follow the bait that I lift. If it does, then that, that's going to be an active fish. And, and I can probably get that fish to bite. I've, I've moved them as far as four or five, six feet off the bottom. Um, and I've got them to bite. It, it takes a little finessing. You, you lift them, um, they'll follow up with it, and then I just kind of shake it there a little bit. 
and then I, I start to free fall it back to the bottom and see if they'll follow with it and if they follow with I'll, I'll lift again and, and basically just play a game of cat and mouse um, and, and eventually um, again for the most part I've been able to get them to go uh, the other type of scenario is you go ahead and, and one comes in on the screen you lift on it I've got one on the screen now and it doesn't follow this one's actually following I've moved them two feet already went back down lifting them again he's losing interest I'm gonna go back down to him shake it a little bit I'm gonna lift again Okay, he actually lost interest and just uh, disappeared off the screen, so probably swam off to the side. But um, the second scenario is you get one come in on the screen, and you, you lift one of the jigs, and, and he'll just stay parked there. He won't move at all. So then what I'll do is I'll, I'll set the, you know, have both rods still set on the bucket. The one I lifted, I'll just set back on the bucket, and I'll just leave them dead stick there. And um, I may tap the rod tips once in a while just to make sure those minnows stay active. Um, it seems as though if the minnows stop swimming, the, the fish don't want them. So, so the, the bait needs to be moving. And, um, you know, I may give them 15, 20, 30 seconds, and then I'll go ahead and lift the rod again and, and see if his attitude, if you will, has changed. And, uh, again, see if I can get him to, to rise off the bottom. Um, the active fish... I've been able to move, like I said, four to six feet off the bottom. And a lot of them are finally committing to the bait um, at about four feet off the bottom. And um, usually what starts happening is um, as I move up and down, they start to follow that more rapidly. And, and when I see them move almost as fast as I'm lifting or dropping the bait, then that tells me that that fish is, is really has committed to that bait and um, the chances are really good that he's going to bite. So um, I'll just keep working him until he bites. And um, my buddy Jim had one on today on the screen and he worked that fish for seven, and eight, uh, seven or eight minutes and that fish never did commit to the bait. It never bit. But it, it followed that bait up and down for, for seven or eight minutes. Um, so you don't always get them. But uh, it's always a good sign. If you, if you can pull one off the bottom and, uh, and they tend to follow your bait uh, up and down, um, generally more, uh, more times than not, um, you're going to get that fish to bite. So just stay with it and, um, you know, persevere, and uh, it'll generally pay off for you. Okay, I just had a mark real high on the screen. The fish was about six foot off the bottom. I reeled up to him. Get him up here a little bit. I, I reeled up to him and he responded right away. Let's see what we got here. It's kind of hard to film and reel at the same time, but let's see what we got. I suspect this is a whitefish. Yep, there we go. It's a nice big tulipy. <laughs> There we go. All right, there's something really interesting about this tulipy, and and these are bait fish in uh, Lake of the Woods, and they're they're pretty good size. You know, this fish is going to be, um, you know, a good 12 inches probably. But I want you to take a look at the side of this white fish. That fish has obviously um, been hit before by another fish. I would guess at some point that fish escaped being a meal, um, probably by a big northern uh, or possibly a muskie. So that's that's their food source up here, are these, these big tulipies. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the wraps on it. Uh, basically, the last hour or so, I ended up getting uh, three white fish total. So what I thought was going to be a pretty tough day with the east wind and, and real overcast skies, um, fish seemed a little lethargic this morning. Um, actually, it turned out pretty well. Um, white fishes, they've, uh, the white fish have kept me uh, active, and uh, we've got a few saugers and walleyes for the frying pan tonight, and uh, I'll see if I can get some footage of, uh, of our fish dinner tonight. I'll have you film this. You want me to film it? grab it? Just, I haven't even got it. Is it going? Is it running? Yeah, uh, lens is that. Oh, so you had me. Yeah. 